Okay. They didn't give me a gavel, but we are calling this meeting to order. This is the January 11th meeting of the Bow Park. We are at the Marilla Recreation Center, and our first order of business is establishing a quorum. We have all six current members of our board present, as well as Assistant Manager Mozzarelli, City Attorney Simonton, and Director Wiles takes us to approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes, our regular December 14th, 2022 minutes, and our special meeting minutes from December 28th. Is there any member of the board willing to uh, move if there are no additions or corrections? Just move to a move for second proof. Okay. Minutes will stand as presented. We are going to change the order of our agenda and first uh, go down to the executive director's report thank you um i have some general updates in this report i'm going to skip those and get to the item of the ice arena construction project timeline because that is what most everyone is here about um, and thank you all for coming thank you very much so i've got a statement from Beaupark here, but I have the um, Cliff Notes version in bullet points in this report, and I'm going to go through those. A little bit of background. Um, on December 29th, as you all know, Beaupark made a difficult announcement that the 2023-24 ice season would be catastrophically impacted by equipment lead times and sequencing challenges within the Ice Arena Improvement Project. Since then, Bow Park and the City of Morgantown have heard public comment regarding this announcement. We've received correspondence, um, and Bow Park senior staff have continued to work in a solution-oriented manner regarding options for that season. And as many of you know, our board has also done lots of community outreach during that time. As part of this effort, Mills Group pulled together additional resources from their extended team to meet with us and facilitate further exploration into the details, obstacles, and challenges that we are facing. Beaupark also involved our bonding agency and our legal team to discuss items related to the bond schedule and requirements. As a result of those efforts, we believe that we have a way forward that is likely to deliver at least a shortened 2023-24 season and still complete the project as anticipated. This changes the scenario that Bow Park discussed at the end of December in the following ways. A two-part mobilization approach that will involve removing the chiller system from the main project bid and issuing a separate notice to bidders for delivery of that system. Mills Group has informed us that by removing this portion of the project from the general bid, we will likely be able to deliver a permanent installed chiller system by the time the modified season begins, which would be October 1st of 2023. With this approach, many of the other delays in the general bidding process can be avoided, and the chiller bid can attract specialized contractors that may not be interested in subcontracting under the general bid. In addition to this change of mobilization approach, we sought several uh, folks for technical guidance for some of the other things that we were concerned about, such as slab preservation during the roof and exterior demolition and subsequent construction. This guidance was provided. We are now more comfortable with that part of the scenario as well. It also results in a more concrete assurance for you all that ICE will be, be available for use by October 1st. This assurance would allow for a permanent chiller solution, which would mean we would not have rental costs of up to $75,000 that we were expecting with a temporary chiller. Finally, it allows the general contractor to focus on non-ice making areas, which would keep that side of the project moving forward in a more uniform manner. Things to note. We're still talking about a modified restriction on the 23-24 season. Mills Group indicates that season is March 1st 
or I'm sorry, October 1st to March 1st. So we're looking at five months. That is longer than we originally projected, which was also another concern of ours. The end of the season for the current season would once again need to be February 26th so that these guys can get in here and, and get started. That would accommodate the March 1st start of the project. Now, I know a lot of you all had made um, alternate arrangements already for the end of the season, so we don't currently have rentals scheduled for March. So after all of this discussion and roundtabling that we've done, it is the recommendation of our A&E consultants, Mills Group, um, that we follow this approach. And it is going to be my recommendation to the board that given these additional explorations and assurances on several points of concern, that we amend our initial service timeline and follow the Mills Group recommendation to proceed. So as I said, I do have a full statement um, that I'll be sharing with the press uh, from Bow Park. Um, I also have the recommendation from Mills Group. Does anyone on the board have any questions for Director Wiles concerning the ice strength project update? Mostly, <laughs> any, any, whatever, about anything. Anything. you over there. So, so <clears throat> I just want to state that I appreciate um, all of the work that went into this um, from the Mills Group, from uh, our director and her entire team, from the city of Morgantown and um, Bond Council. So just mm -hmm. that. You tell you're working on a lot of things over a short period of time, so appreciate that. And we did have um, a lot of contact, and we'll um, be hearing from the, the hockey and, and uh, skating community today. And just appreciate everyone being willing to have the conversation. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? <coughs> Do you wish to give the rest of your report now? Um, yes. So we've got some general updates. Uh, work is in progress at Dorsey's Knob Lodge on the improvements and upgrades there. Um, actually, most of the demo to that deck is done. Um, so if you want to run by and take a look um, at the lodge without a deck, you can. Um, we finished some mulch touches on the playgrounds that we were replacing this fall and winter uh, this week. Those playgrounds, just to remind everyone, again, were Wiles Hill, playground number two, King Street, and Suncrest Mini. Uh, Wiles Hill Cafe is slated to open in February. Uh, we're continuing to assemble replacement picnic tables and other amenity items. And Studio 54 is doing some great programming. I think Mayor Celine went to, to something there at Studio. Um, Studio 54. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said that. I just showed I my age. <laughs> like I just there. showed my age. <laughs> Studio 287 is doing some great programming. Um, and work continues in Marilla Park. If anyone has been in the upper or lower entrance, um, we are preparing for the beginning of the pool project and uh, taking down some auxiliary buildings, some fencing and things like that, and doing the same in Lower Marilla Park. And our final budget meeting with the city is tomorrow, January 12th, at 11 a.m., I think. I'm looking at Emily. Um, 11 a.m. That's about it. All right. Does any member of the board have questions on Director Wiles general updates? Playgrounds look good. Thank you. Yeah. King Street's a nice improvement. We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't Got been to over to that one yet. Um, yeah, I don't think that there's all right. Um, we take no action on the director's report. So that will bring us to correspondence, back to the original part of the agenda. Do we have any correspondence? I did not include the correspondence that we received um, regarding the rank project in your packets. We did get through either my email, Marissa's email, or info at 17 emails regarding the project. I do have those on record. 
um, you all were, com were commented or um, they were sent to a lot of you as well. So, yeah, council got um, probably about two dozen or so emails as well, yeah. but I don't think that there's a need to <laughs> read every single one yeah, here. Just... We have forwarded those to you for, for the record. Okay. That brings us to our oral communications and our public comment period. The public comment is intended to provide Bopark an opportunity to receive information regarding items on the agenda or other items of interest. Uh, Bopark does have public comment policies. Each comment will be limited to three minutes and Director Wiles will be timing that. Um, I believe we will waive the, the rule that says multiple individuals must um, appoint one person to speak for the group. We're, we're interested in hearing everyone's thoughts, especially after the updates that we were all just given. Uh, please direct your comments to the board, not to any individual person or member of the public or staff. Um, comments have to be relevant to the board functions. No profane language, political statements, or personal attacks will be tolerated. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. If there's any member of the public wishing to speak, you may, I guess, start forming your line. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Frank Oliverio. I'm president for Morgantown Hockey Association. Uh, I want to thank you for your remarks. And uh, if I understand it, I appreciate uh, the hard work that you all have done. And thank you for uh, letting us continue to have home ice here in Morning Job. Um, as a member of the community, I, I serve on uh, a couple boards as well. And um, the one thing I would ask, you know, I, I'm on the West Run Planning District. And every month we have a meeting about variances and setbacks and things like that. And we get our professional guidance from those in, in the government agency, but yet we do our due diligence, we look at the maps, we try to figure out who's putting the shed where and how close to the border. And that's what really we want, and, and I appreciate that you all have done, but what we want for the board, for the Bell Park Board. We want you to do your due diligence. We want you to ask questions. We want you to say, why is it being done that way? Why is it costing that much? Why does it need delay? Why is it doing this instead of that. And um, that's really what, what we've wanted from the start. Um, I appreciate the fact, again, that we won't have to uh, go searching for ice. Um, it's very beneficial for our families, which are your families, um, and our community. So again, thank you for that. Um, I, I just want to um, you know, thank you for the speed with which you did that, because Part of our problem was we were operating under a time crunch. Um, we have to get our rosters for next year into USA Hockey by April. And because of that, if we don't have home ice, then we have to tell our families, and then they have to go try out elsewhere. And nobody wanted that. And as much as I had faith in all of us, hopefully getting together and solving this, um, the time crunch is what was really difficult. Um, I know I'm not supposed to say personal members, but Danielle, thank you for your help and thank you for reaching out to us and the communications and, and the conversations that you and I have had with Todd Gookin and others. And I appreciate your help on this. So again, thank you all. Um, just so I understand, we're looking at now February 26th, end date on 2023. Correct. October 1, start date, October 23. Correct. And then a... March 1st. March 1st end date for 2020. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. You guys want to say something? <laughs> I mean, yeah. they, they came Come on, guys. You got out of school. You got to say something. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Matthew Nelson. I kind of intended to come up here and encourage a pause again, so you <laughs> threw us for a bit of a loop, and I appreciate that you did that. I really want to say thank you to everybody. I think it's been a very productive week, probably a little bit uh, 
some anxiety on all sides, but I think this is a good example of what can happen when the community gets together, we all voice our concerns in a productive way, people hear, they listen, they respond, and they go to work. I think this is a, a fantastic solution. It probably saves Morgantown Hockey and your user groups. I really believe had we not been able to put this, it's not a pause, I suppose, but had we not been able to keep the ice open next year, we really wouldn't have had a need for ice at all. So this is, again, I, I'm running out of ways to say thank you for working with us, and I really do appreciate all your help. Uh, as you go through this process, you do have a lot of individuals here who understand ice rinks, maybe not from a business standpoint, but from a user standpoint. We're, we're at rinks throughout the country, Nashville, Detroit, Boston, the Pittsburgh area. We are be a valuable resource as you figure out what the design is going to look like. I know you probably pretty far down that road, but I'd love to sit at that table, or one of us would, or volunteer any time, any uh, questions you have, I'd love to answer. I'd love to just work with the city and with Bopark as we keep this kind of productive relationship that I think we're forming right now. So again, thank you. That's what I had to say. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Bopark. <laughs> My name is John Kralczyk, and I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. And I'm a USA Hockey board member. So I sit on a national board for USA Hockey. And uh, at one time I was on this Morgantown Hockey Board. And uh, we've had these problems for years. And uh, I just want to thank your group for working with the community to make a resolution. We know these are difficult things. We all handle construction on a daily basis in our life. And we know some things get, make the timelines and some don't. But uh, we knew that there could be a reasonable solution to this. I, I want to thank you guys and also offer my help in any way from the national board member to uh, make this a wonderful experience coming out of it. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the public portion, Mr. Giuliani. <laughs> okay. Tell you what I'm happy about. Looks like everybody up here has a smile. Looks like the folks back here have a smile. So it looks like we we're able to achieve something here through hard work and efforts. That's so awesome. Um, I look forward to working with you folks in the future. My name, like again, my name is James Giuliani. I live at 256 Prairie Avenue, and uh, I knew we could get this done. It's just a matter. It seems like everything we do in life comes down to you know making a crunch and somehow, but uh, I think they're happy. That that's good. My my goal would be now to be able to achieve, to achieve the timeline that we have and stay on it because really that's we still have that ahead of us and that's going to be quite a challenge. And I thank these folks to make sure and help you get there because they're very good. So God bless. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jesse Wilkerson. Um, I'm also inspired by what this group <laughs> has achieved. Um, I'm here as a representative of the Greenmont Neighborhood Association. We've recently reconstituted and gotten more active. And one thing that the group is really interested in is seeing a public park in Greenmont. We currently don't have one. We're one of the few downtown neighborhoods that lacks public space. Um, as you know, our neighborhood is very urban, small lots, many of us don't have backyards. I mean, we really think that a public park would add a lot of value, um, a lot of bring quality of life to uh, Morgantown's oldest neighborhood. So we're ready and willing to work with Bow Park and the city to figure out a process for establishing a public park. And so I just wanted to come today and let you all know that and know, let you know of the community's interest in starting one um, or, or figuring out a process for developing one. We meet um, the last Monday of every month. If anyone's ever interested in coming to our meeting, um, we love visitors and we'd love to hear more about what we need to do to help get a park established. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you. I would like to join my colleagues to say thank you for what you have done on the project of the ice rink. Uh, I have just a comment and it's 
forgive me my ignorance because I'm not uh, very well versed in all those things, but uh, I understood that one of the things that created long lead times and problems with the project of the ice rink was the chiller that was difficult to obtain. And, and so when I hear that is basically the first thing that will be done in 2023, uh, I feel like uh, there's something dissonant here. And so I was wondering if we were making sure that the people that will that take responsibility to install the chiller and make sure that it's working for October 1st are liable to make it happen. And that if it doesn't happen, that they are liable maybe financially so that we can fund temporary ice rink to make sure that on October 1st we do skate. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind stating your name for the record? Stéphane Collignon. I'm just a parent of the Hockey Association. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is there any other member of the public? Uh, my name is Joe Adams, and I'm uh, a hockey parent. Uh, I, are y'all allowed to answer questions? I just had one. One. We we generally do not, but you can ask, and we'll. It's a simple one. Is there a <laughs> is there a clock on the money as far as the bond money that it has to be spent by a certain date? Is there an end clock? <laughs> There is. Um, I am not certain of the entire timeline. I believe it is a certain amount within the first year and then the remainder within three years. Okay. Don't quote me on that because I'm not positive. Our bond council is not present. Okay, I understand. <laughs> the city attorney is. We have separate bond council. Okay. Now, I want to thank you for the for what you're doing, and I, I thank you for your efforts. Volunteer on boards, I've been on boards myself, association boards, other stuff. I, I appreciate the effort that you put in. Uh, and actually, I came to the meeting to ask the question, you know, why I didn't understand, and I acknowledge my ignorance as far as construction in a hockey rink, why we couldn't stage, stage certain assets in functions and do it in phases to expedite the construction of the project. And it uh, sounds like maybe that's where you're at, is, if, I, if I understood you correctly. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing is, I know I'm going to be pushing for more. The guys back there are probably making faces and they're going to grimace. Any way we can get to uh, September 1st? Yeah. <laughs> 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 stay, stay, just <laughs> go smack Michael Mills around and time to make yeah. it happen. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's going to be out of his control pretty soon. We'll have a contract around the board. But just uh, not to ask for a proof of concept, basically, but, you know, there's about five girls I've watched grow up in the hockey rink. I'm a, I'm a uh, girl dad, and uh, I love those girls to death. Are we going to make, are we going to make some? September 1st, October 1st? I October 1st, October 1st, yes. You feel pretty confident? I feel pretty confident about that. September 1st, I don't think will be doable, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hi, Nick Reimer. Uh, first order of business, I want to say thank you for everybody that attended Mary Sloan came. Uh, I know that you uh, and Mary were there. I know that other people were there. I don't know if everybody was there. So I uh, came to the game this weekend, maybe some game and talk to our girls. It was, they were a little confused. Was, they were like, oh, so whatever, they had fun with it. So we do appreciate it. Um, just wanted to say uh, again, thanks for coming up with a plan. We had came in this meeting with different expectations, I guess, and you guys did some straight work and figured something out. Um, one question that we did have, um, kind of as a group, is, is the with the new rink structure, will it be able to be open during the summer when this is all complete? And is that a plan? If that's going to ever be answered or talked about, it has to, to be addressed if there's going to be ice in the summertime um, once this is finally complete. So. There is the capability um, with the system of ice year-round, but programmatically we are not um, expecting that anytime in the near future because we do have other programmatic uses for the building in the summer. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for everything. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shoji Sataki, and uh, I'm a coach and a parent. But um, I just had a few questions regarding the. I know the. I'm really pleasantly surprised, and thank you for the 
listening to the community about really making sure that certain segments of the community aren't disenfranchised through this process. But my understanding is that the, there's been a proposed to amend the original project, right, the construction deadline. So if that's the case, is it possible to make sure that we call the question that's voted on before we leave today so that we know those dates are permanent? So that we don't have another week or two or three weeks or a month from now where it goes back to the original proposal? Um, that's possible. I, I would like to see that vote, the, the question called on the changes to, as an amendment to make sure that so the, this is what the project moving forward is going to ha happen now. And second, um, as you move forward, uh, I really appreciate listening to all the stakeholders. But in the future, I hope that that'll continue. Um, I grew up around an ice rink living in Alaska, and my sister at one time was a national rink figure skater. And she used to come, she's come quite a bit and used that ice rink. And one of the things that we always talk about is that um, it's um, the arches that are in that building. Right? And even though I know some people feel that's like an architectural feature of that ice rink, it's actually one of the biggest hindrances of that ice rink to someone that uses that facility. But you can't actually see down the ice, right? As, um, as a parent or as a participant, as a spectator, to be able to watch games or the figure skating that's happening. Because those actually block, physically block our ability to actually see the whole entire ice rink. And so maybe in the future, as the construction goes on, those things can seriously be addressed. But, um, I'm just hoping today before everything ends that this uh, changes as an amendment to the original proposal is called to question so that it's voted upon so that we know leaving here we feel pretty confident that these are the construction deadlines that will actually be held. Thank you very much. Thank you. For, for the record, we do anticipate board action under our new business. Okay. Hi, my name is Kelly Burthus. Um, I live in Morgantown, but not within city limits. Um, thank you, first of all, for everything you've done to move this forward. Um, I have some hope now that maybe there will be more collaboration in the future between um, parents and MHA, and maybe we can actually start to have a back and forth conversation that moves all of our goals, which is like the dream. And it's really hard to get there. I, you know, no from experience, but. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is what um, what support of hockey specifically in this area can do in terms of the changing face of youth sports in um, in America. So when I was a kid, there really wasn't an avenue for team sports for someone like me. I have ADHD. I have a coordination disorder. Um, Usually, you know, if I wanted to do t-ball, you'd just be stuck out by the dandelions in right field and nobody would bother you, nobody would teach you anything. Nobody would give you an opportunity to actually learn to play. You were just kind of treated like you were there. Um, and MHA is built different. From the time I've been involved with MHA in 2019, it is built different. The way that they do development of athletes and children um, the way that they incorporate and include people on their travel teams is something I was not expecting and is something unlike anything I've ever really seen in youth sports up to now. Um, genetics is real. My kids also have ADHD and some of them do have coordination disorders. Um, these parents, these folks who actually, you know, want to win will put my kids in the game. They will teach them. They will take the time to make sure they get the touches of a puck to progress their game. Knowing that what we're looking at is not a short game of wins in one season, but a long game of developing people that are grown-ups that play rec sports and that can work to one another, you know, work together. I lost a lot not being able to play team sports as a kid in terms of learning how to communicate with people that weren't like me and um, work toward a goal and, and work as a group toward that sort of thing. And the fact that MHA has been able to give my kids that opportunity um, is, means a lot to me. And I would again encourage um, open communication, transparency on the contracting side of things um, with MHA. You know, 
we want to see ice just as much as you do. And um, we also need lead time to pivot if we need to pivot. Um, because, you know, I, I just think back to 2020 when I had full expectation that we were going to be able to just kind of get to the ice whenever we needed to during the pandemic and the chiller went out and all of a sudden I had to add in two hours to my day, three to four days a week to get my kid to Connellsville and my work suffered, my family suffered for that um, and having at least a little foresight onto whether that's going to happen is really critical to those of us who do have kids to play. Um, so thank you again. I hope we can see more collaboration, particularly around um, athlete development, not just in hockey, but in other sports, because it's, it's critical and it's something that really could create a beautiful result for our community. Thank you. Is there any other member of the public wishing to address the board? I'll go. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for taking the time out to hear me. Uh, my name is Chris Aceri. I am a, uh, <laughs> I'm a senior criminology student here at West Virginia University. Um, I also play on the hockey team. I think it's important that you hear this. Uh, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. There is a rink every five miles from my house. Up there, I'm not, I'm not anybody, but I came to West Virginia with purpose and a passion to play hockey in a place where I think it would matter. This entire state has three rinks. One's a semi-pro facility in Wheeling, and the other's three hours south. I think that, uh, it means a lot to play here. Uh, you can make a name for yourself, like really, in a really impactful way to all these kids. Uh, it, it means a lot to come here, be a Mountaineer. If you're one of the best players on my team, you're one of the best players in the entire state. You can't really do that anywhere else. Um, but on top of being a player, I also coach. I coach about uh, 150 of these kids, all the way from the 8U team to um, the 14U and high school team. I coach about eight hours a day. We have practice four hours a week, two games. Oh, sorry, sorry. My team has practice four hours a week, two games. I'm on the ice about 14 hours. Uh, it, it means a lot. Um, I did it just as an internship, but I liked it so much that I applied to grad school here. I applied to grad school about two weeks ago, and uh, thankfully I heard I just got in. Um, I found out I, um, I applied three days before the December 29th decision, which would have very much impacted what I would have done if I found that out earlier. <laughs> but I'm glad that we came up with a compromise to at least do something for next year. I think that means a lot. Um, and, and much like, uh, I know Kelly just testified with her son, we also, um, I also coach a kid who's slightly autistic and he, he comes to the rink and he counts on me to brighten his day. And one thing I love about coaching is coaching this kid. It makes my coaching easier, funner. And his parents rely on having him do something fun to keep him up, keep him energetic, and keep him going on with life. And it's very important that he keeps skating. So I'm glad he'll be able to do at least um, something next year, which sounds very good. And. Yeah, lastly, uh, thank you for your time and much like Frank and everyone else has said, I hope that your next decisions are very impactful and judgmental on your accurate information that you have in front of you. Thank you. I'm sure the, the hockey kids are happy to have you around for grad school. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Now's the time. Okay. 
we will end our public comment period and move on to our financial reports. Director Wise. Um, not much out of the ordinary on the financial reports, except just note that the second pay of December is not on there under wages because we are um, switching service providers, so we're, we're kind of in flux there. Uh, that will be caught up by next month. Okay. Any questions on the financial reports? Okay. Things look normal to me. Any board member willing to make a motion on the financial reports? Move to approve. Thank you, Mayor. Second it. Or accept. Accept it, I guess. <laughs> All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Um, we have already done our executive director's report. I will again allow a moment. Did any member of the board have any additional questions on anything in the director's report? No? Okay. We have no old business, which brings us to new business. The Ice Arena construction project timeline. Is there any member of the board willing to move to permit Mills Group to amend bid documents to reflect updated information in the new proposed timeline? <laughs> <laughs> Permit Mills Group to amend the bid documents reflecting the uh, proposed changes to the new timeline. That's close to what I said, I think. Oh, motion. Thank you, Susan. I'd be willing second. to second it. And I also have a question. Thank you, Mayor. Discussion. <laughs> Mayor. <laughs> question. Um, so, in line with, um, and I know you all thought about this, but I'm just for the public and all of us. So when we're looking at an October 1st start, when do we need to start making ice to have that actually be in effect? Mid-September. And we have discussed that. So in the round table. September 15th-ish or yes. something? September 15th. 15th ish would give us a little bit of extra time. We usually do leave two weeks for that purpose just in case we run into any issues, which we shouldn't this year with new equipment. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you say we shouldn't run into no, yeah. issues, <laughs> shoulds, woulds, could, yeah. So September 15th is yeah. that good. Yeah. So just so we're all thinking, thinking about, about I know same. that you all think that. But mm -hmm. we all need to be thinking that too. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that when you all are used to that it takes time to make ice. But just for all of us, right. that we need that date in September to make the date in October. So. Yes. Just like everybody that we you know we've talked about, we need to the last date for ice is February twenty sixth because we need that next week to remove all our stuff so they can get in there by the first of the month and get started. So Other questions or concerns? Further discussion? No? Okay. All in favor of the motion? Passes unanimously. 6 0. Um, doesn't seem right. I thought this was going to be a long meeting, and here we are at <laughs> board comments. Um, Mr. Morris, would you care to? Sure, I feel like no one can see me, so I'm not going to I just want to thank you all for showing up, and I want to thank uh, Director Wiles and Deputy Mayor and uh, Ryan and everyone else for really working hard on this the past couple weeks. I feel like it was a little, uh, everything came to, I feel like there's the impression that something was being sat on when in actuality, leadership found out about it, they let us know right away. I believe we let the user groups know pretty much right away. And I know this was a stressful few weeks for everybody, but I'm glad we're at the place we're at right now. I feel like we're in a place we can all move forward. Um, we've talked about communication. I know these meetings can be hard to get to or pain with work or everything, but they are to the public. But there's something y'all really want to talk with us about. We can make arrangements to meet other times, may not as an official body, but I know 
members of this board have been very willing to show up other times, in, you know, informally or whatever. So feel free to reach out and we can try to make that happen the best we can. And uh, I think I'm just, thanks again, Mel, for making this, pushing this forward, because there's no one here that doesn't want to see hockey in Morgantown. So I think everyone's happy with this, and I think this moves in the right direction. So that's it. Very well said. Thank you. No, you know, but, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. <laughs> Ms. Toma? Uh, I just, you know, wanted to echo that, but also to specifically add that, you know, the amount that was achieved between our last meeting and today is, is absolutely remarkable. And I'm grateful to so many of you who were able to work off the clock and apparently around the clock to make that happen. Um, for those of us who have work. Uh, I appreciate the board and everyone involved for doing as much as they could, uh, perhaps more than is humanly possible. Um, so I just wanted to really say how much I appreciate that, and of course, the second everything that Emil said. Thank you. Budget Chair Clinton. Um, there's not a whole lot to add to that. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and for voicing your concerns and, and, and communicating and participating in this process. I mean, this is for you and, and the community, so that's, that's been a good thing. And uh, Director Wiles and Ryan and the whole team, that's, yeah, like Emil said, it's amazing how much has been accomplished, and I'm looking forward to moving forward with the whole project and seeing it to completion <laughs> and seeing you all on the ice. <laughs> Echoing everybody else for you all coming out. It's great to see the community uh, involved in all this. I did attend with our president and uh, Deputy Mayor Trumbull at the uh, girls game on Saturday. It was wonderful to see so many people there and seeing so many people active in the community. Um, I think the renovation will help provide a lot of great opportunities to grow the program and also just grow community involvement at the ice and getting more people there um, in the future. So thank you and thank you, Mel. Everybody. Thank you. Nice. Yes. Ma'am? I'm going to stand up. I thought that was maybe shift a little so I could see people. Um, <laughs> hi. Boy, we have pillars here. Uh, <laughs> 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 I know everybody has a pillar. Well, that's what holds up roofs, I guess. Um, I really appreciate um, all of your patience with this. It's hard to deliver bad news. It's much easier to deliver good news. Um, the reason that you got bad news was in the interest of trying to be transparent and doing our due diligence. And so it's good that we were able to turn it around. But um, just sometimes we don't always have the best news to deliver. Um, for those of you who are wanting us to do our due diligence, um, sometimes we're doing more due diligence than um, we think we are. Uh, sometimes um, it's helpful to have an invitation, so I appreciate um, the person who's back there in the corner who <laughs> made the nice invitation for uh, coming to see girls hockey in Morgantown, and uh, it was fun to be able to um, schedule that in and come and watch, and then also watch the kids um, learning how to play hockey for free, that program, um, which was right after, on Sunday, right after the girls' hockey game. And, uh, and that was wonderful to see everybody getting out on the ice and having an opportunity without regard to their ability to pay to try out hockey. So it's just, um, I appreciate that this happened in this way and um, do look forward to working together things out as as we need to so and also I appreciate that during council meeting and during this meeting people being able to speak to each other um, uh, in a in a positive but direct way so thank you all I will also express appreciation for the invitation as assistant manager Mozzarelli and the mayor will tell you I am really bad at saying no so if I'm asked <laughs> to show up somewhere I show up and it was a it was a great game 1-3-0 I was very excited um, what a good game to attend though I get the impression they win most of their games um, yeah I I always appreciate anyone who's willing to show up to a public meeting and speak. It's especially intimidating when there are news cameras here. 
and a large group of people and I did this, I was in your seat for years before I was on the board or elected and I understand the frustration that comes from speaking at a public meeting and feeling like no one is listening. So I am happy that we were able to engage and have some personal conversations and open up those lines of communications because I can assure you that I know how you feel and I am always listening. So moving forward, let's continue that. I'm happy to come to any of your events or any meetings or anything like that that, that you feel necessary. <laughs> Everyone in this room clearly has my contact information I have heard from you all, sometimes multiple times. So don't hesitate to reach out and um, we are going to have to, to work together to stay on this timeline and hold some people accountable. So I look forward to continued communication. And finally, I want to thank the staff. While we were having a lot of communications with you all and other potential partners in town to see what we could do for next season, they immediately jumped in and engaged with Mills Groups and, or Mills Group and the other um, contractors and subcontractors and other other people to see what they could do and they came to a, a best case solution i think i think this is is as good as we could have expected so finally thank you to the board um this is a very difficult situations like this sometimes make it difficult to be a volunteer board member and I appreciate everyone on all of the city's boards and commissions for giving up their own personal time to try to make Morgantown and the surrounding area a much better place. So thank you. I appreciate you. Please have a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all I have. So if there's nothing else for the good of the commission, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. First, Jenny. Second. Got it.